was the morning before Christmas and we were all in God's house. That has the making of a nice poem, I think. Good morning. Good morning. Don't see any of that white stuff out there, and some of you like that, I guess. I kind of like about two weeks of white stuff this time of the year, and then it can all go away. Got beautiful poinsettias up here to remember our loved ones that have passed. And um, we've got some announcements that I want to make, and then I'll turn it over to you for further announcements. I want to remind you that the candlelight service is at 5 o'clock. So uh, maybe get that word around to those that are not in regular attendance. Also, um, the church office will be closed this week. And... Uh, I've got an announcement from uh, the Jasper Newton Foundation I would like to make. Um, I volunteer for Meals on Wheels, and I only drive every other week, and it takes about one hour. And it's a nice thing, you know, for, for us to do, to deliver meals to those that are um, in some situation where they need the meals for nourishment. And uh, they're looking for more drivers because the routes take about an hour um, and they want to reduce the driving time so that the meals will be delivered quicker and um, be warmer for those clients that need these meals. So we're looking for, they're looking for volunteers. If you're interested, you could contact uh, Brianne Hooker at the Found Newton Foundation. Are there other announcements from the congregation? Well, if not, let me share this with you. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and we continue our Christmas series, Angels Among Us. May we join the angels this day, being carriers of God's message of good news. For the last few weeks of Advent, we have been making our way to the manger. Today, we are almost there. Tomorrow is Christmas. May we have ears to hear the angelic voices and join them by carrying God's good news to our world. During our worship service, it's just fine to keep your phones handy, but do silence them. If you would like to take photos or send out a tweet or message of something you hear or experience in worship, please do. And use the hashtag, do not be afraid, or more love. Now let us pause, take a deep breath, let us lower the lights and prepare our hearts for worship as we join together with the angels being carriers of God's message of good news. The sky was brighter than usual that night, making it easier to keep track of the sheep, but then it got very bright. You'd have thought that all the glory shining would have been the sign. That's what most of us look for, 
great big obvious clues about God's presence. But instead, the angel said that a baby, a newborn, helpless baby, in a feeding trough was what we were to see. God's sign to us that more love is possible for us all. This time, let us light together our fourth candle of Advent. There are angels among us that may not meet the eye. There are messages of love coming from a choir on high. But don't just look up, for the way God works is to plant more love right here on earth. Just like it was with Jesus' birth, there are angels among us. There are angels among us. There are angels among us bringing love on earth. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And please join me in our opening prayer. Holy, living God, blessed Jesus, guiding spirit, alight within us your flame of love this day. Grant us openness to hear your message. Grant us courage to be your messengers in the world, creating more love in the midst of fear. And with the angel messengers above us, among us, and within us, we sing. Now please stand for our next hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Come and worship, come. 
time for us to pass the peace to our friends and neighbors. can feel his mighty power and God's grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings, see the glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Well, please be seated, and if I can have our Children, gather up to the front with me. Yeah, probably you better leave the little... Yeah, here, Olivia. Let me see those. Yeah, so let's not play with those now. All right. Well, today's a very special day, isn't it? You know what today is? Christmas Eve. It's Christmas Eve. Yeah, they're just... It's, and it's also the fourth Sunday of, of Advent. And you know what else today is? I was coming home this morning from the interstate up by McDonald's, and you know what I saw? The Dairy Queen's finally open. <laughs> the drive through that is. But, uh, yeah, but it's almost Christmas, isn't it? And we've been making our way and, uh, for Christmas, and so this has been very, very, very special. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and pray together, all right, before we, uh, before we begin. And let's pray that prayer that we've been praying together. Uh, remember it, where it goes, dear Lord, open our ears. Okay, let's pray together. Dear Lord, you, with your hands, with your hands, dear Lord, open our ears to hear the angels sing. Our hearts and our minds are open to the messages that they bring. Very good. Amen. Amen? All right. Well, for the last few weeks, we've been uh, talking about God's special messengers. And what are they called in the Bible? Yes. Angels. Very good. And do you see any signs of angels this morning, maybe? Any signs at all? What, what do you see? Where's... Yeah, there's some angels there. What else? Is there any other signs of, of angels? Ah, yes. Could you hand that to me, Luke? Thank you very much. Feathers are sometimes a sign, aren't they? Do you know that, that people used to use feathers to write with? Do you know that? Yeah, they were called a quill. All right? In fact, from about five, the year 500 up to about, oh, the mid-1800s or so, which wasn't really all that long ago, people used quills. Um, usually they, they, they use a goose feather like this or some other feather uh, from, a, from a large bird. And uh, that's what they use to write with. And it's good to write special things with, with uh, special notes, don't you think? There's a lot of good reasons to, to write um, and say things to people like, thank you, right? Or maybe we write someone and we say, Merry Christmas and a Christmas card. Or we might write, um, oh, here, get well. Yeah, get well. And that would be we would write to someone who's sick, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. 
but really all of those letters, whether it's Merry Christmas or Happy Birthday or Get Well or all of those letters we would write are really letters that speak of our love for others, right? And that's what today's focus is. And in fact, that's that candle that we brought up today, isn't it? It talks to us about love. That's our focus. God's message for us today is love. And this is the sign for love. Can you do that? For love. The sign for love. That's the sign for love. Okay? Um, I want to read a poem to you. It's... Um, it's a, a poem about Christmas and, and how uh, God loves us and what Christmas is and in God's love. And whenever you hear me say the word love, I want you to give the sign for love. Okay, are you ready? Are ready? God's love embraced this world so wide, he sent his son, our precious guide, in Bethlehem. In a humble manger stall, Jesus was born to save us all. With open arms, his love does shine. A gift of grace so divine. At Christmas time, let's joyfully proclaim God's love for us in Jesus' name. Well, that was wonderful. You guys did great. Yeah. You know, this whole Christmas season, we've known that there were angels among us. And guess what? You guys can be messengers, too. Remember how uh, earlier I pretended to, to use my feather as, as a pen? Remember that? Remember that? Whenever you go back to your family, okay? Whenever you go back to Mom and Dad Luke, and in here after a bit, whenever Daddy comes back down from, from preaching, uh, what I'd like for you to do is use your feather to maybe gently write the word... L-O-V-E in the palm of their hand. What's that spell? Love. That's right. So you can write love in someone who you love's palm of their hand with your, I'm going to give you a feather. Or if you don't want to write out the whole word, what's another image that you could draw? Yeah? A heart. So you could go like this. And you could draw a heart in their hand. Okay, can you do that? All right. But before you go, let's, uh, let's pray together our prayer. And I want you to pray with me aloud, okay? Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your message of love. Give us wings to share your message with the whole world. Amen? Amen? Amen. Okay, very good. Well, let's over here. I want to give you guys each a feather. Oh, that's a nice big feather. Look over there. You already got one? You already got one? Okay. All right. Well, there's not any children's church today, so you can go back and sit down. And girls, you can either sit up here with me or maybe you can go find somebody. Oh, Pam's right back here. Why don't you go sit with Pam, okay? And I bet you can draw a heart on her. What do you bet? I think you can. Let's, let's go ahead and go on back to our seats now. Okay. Right on back here with Pam, girls. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and do that anyways. Come on. Come on. Let's go back. Go back with Pam. All right. Well, today our scripture lesson is from the, uh, the book of Luke, chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 14. Hear the word of the Lord as it's shared to us uh, on the screen, uh, that which is both written and shared as it is acted out. And I do have to warn you, there are sheep here today that were angry and uh, <laughs> even took out a couple of our cast, but uh, we had to cut that out. <laughs> Around the time of Elizabeth's amazing pregnancy and John's birth, the Emperor of Rome, Caesar Augustus, required everyone in the Roman Empire to participate in a massive census, the first census since Quirinius had become governor of Syria. Each person had to go to his or her ancestral city to be counted. 
Mary's fiance Joseph from Nazareth in Galilee had to participate in the census in the same way everyone else did. Because he was a descendant of King David, his ancestral city was Bethlehem, David's birthplace. Mary, who was now late in her pregnancy that the messenger Gabriel had predicted, accompanied Joseph. While in Bethlehem, she went into labor and gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped the baby in a blanket and laid him in a feeding trough because the inn had no room for them. Nearby in the fields outside of Bethlehem, a group of shepherds were guarding their flocks from predators in the darkness of night. Suddenly a messenger of the Lord stood in front of them, and the darkness was replaced by a glorious light, the shining light of God's glory. They were terrified. Don't be afraid. Listen, I bring good news. News of great joy. News that will affect all people everywhere. Today in the city of David, a liberator has been born for you. He is the promised anointed one, the supreme authority. This will be a sign for you. You will know you have found him when you see a baby wrapped in a blanket, lying in a feeding trough. Really? That's the sign? At that moment, the first heavenly messengers were joined by thousands of other messengers, a vast heavenly choir. They praised God. To the highest heights of the universe, glory to God, and on earth peace among all people who bring pleasure to God. As soon as the heavenly messengers disappeared into heaven, the shepherds were buzzing in conversation. Let's rush down to Bethlehem right now. Let's see what's happening. Let's experience what the Lord has told us about. So they ran into town, and eventually they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the feeder trough. After they saw the baby, they spread the story of what they had experienced and what had been said to them about this child. Everyone who heard their story couldn't stop thinking about his meaning. Mary, too, pondered all these events, treasuring each memory in her heart. The shepherds returned to their flocks, praising God for all they had seen and heard. And they glorified God for the way the experience had unfolded, just as the heavenly messenger had predicted. We had so much fun making that uh, video um, out at uh, Ron and Cindy's house. and. The wind was blowing probably about 50 mile an hour. It was just awful. And so I want to thank our sound team so much uh, for um, trying to work that out. And they worked a lot on that video uh, to try to get all that sound out as much as they could. And they did a great job. And, and I didn't know if you happen to notice that one sheep that started walking toward, that was the ornery one. And uh, it did, it took, it took Micah completely out. And, uh, and then I saw, uh, um, uh, I saw another one, it, it even came after Rita, and Sean had to like almost tackle it or something. But um, it, was, it's, it was a lot of fun. But this has just been a great Christmas season. It really has. It's been a lot of fun uh, with our theme, Angels Among Us, and, and uh, making our videos. And this by far was my most fun video uh, with, uh, with all the things that, um, that, that went into it. But um, today we, um, we look at the, the, the Gospel of Luke. And we look at, at this, this passage of, um, of where we see this angelic visit. And we witness um, in the book of Luke, um, well, today we, we actually witness the third appearance of an angel. Uh, if you remember, the first appearance was to Zechariah, uh, the, the, to telling him that he and Elizabeth were going to have a son uh, in their old age and that that child was to be named John. But because of Zacharias's doubt, he was struck silent until that child was born. And then the second time an angel appears in the book of Luke was to Mary, to this virgin, this young lady who was favored by God that was going to give birth to a son and that he was to be named Jesus, which means savior of the world. And then last week we stepped into Matthew's gospel and we witnessed the appearance of the, the angel, the messenger of, um, in, in Joseph's dream. And, uh, and he was reassuring Joseph that, uh, 
that it was truly true that Mary was a virgin and that she was going to give birth to the Son of God. And, and she was to be trusted by what she, tell, what she told him, that God was making the impossible possible. And then today we meet uh, another angel. And then we meet a whole host of angels who appear in the, in the fields to shepherds who are watching their sheep to announce to them, don't be afraid. I bring you, bring you good news that's going to be great joy to all people. Oh, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and, and you'll recognize him by this sign. You'll find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. All oh, the, the angels appear to the shepherds and in, in the dark, the dark of night, to announce the birth of the King, the awaited Messiah, God's gift to all people. And that announcement came to a group of simple shepherds who were tending their sheep at night in a dark field. Imagine that. See, God doesn't just do things just by happenstance. There's a reason. There's always a reason. You see, this announcement didn't take place in a palace, didn't take place in a fortress, or not even in some holy place like a temple. It didn't take place in, in the town square or to a group of people known as the elite, the powerful, the respected, the in crowd, like those holy religious people of that day. Instead, the angels appeared shepherds, common, ordinary shepherds. I'm quite sure they were quite different than the shepherds that we, uh, we like to dress up in, in our Christmas pageants and in the nativity and all clean and nice and endearing. You know, we, we do. We, we dress them up, don't we? We refine our shepherds, making them charming and clean, uh, but in the first century, no one thought shepherds were clean. Nor were they endearing, and nor were they charming <laughs> at all. In, in fact, shepherds were typically smelly, unsavory, rough characters. They had to be, uh, because of the job that they held. They had to be able to offend off predators. They had to corral sheep who... Who, who always seemed to want to escape and run for freedom. The work of a shepherd was and still is extraordinarily difficult. They had to wrangle stubborn sheep. They had to ensure their flocks were well fed. They had to fend off predators. Their predators in this area, in this region, wolves, bears, lions. They even had to fend off the thieves who would try to come in and steal the sheep. When, when shepherds were on duty, someone had to stay awake all night. They, they probably took shifts in, that, uh, in the night, watching and listening for any suspected predators and assuring that the livestock was safe. And sheep are stubborn. Uh, those of you who have ever worked and farmed and worked with sheep, you know they are stubborn. I speak from experience. Uh, always thinking the grass is greener on the other side of the fence, or in their case, of the field. <laughs> uh, and certainly no one in those days saw shepherds as being influential or holding any kind of significant status in society. And so there's something significant here something powerful here about the inclusion of the shepherds in Jesus' story, especially since they were the first <laughs> to know the Savior had been born. See, they were the first to, to go and visit, to, to welcome the Savior to the world. God sent the angels, a heavenly host, to, to, to tell them where to find this child and gave them directions on how to find him, even though shepherds may have been looked down on by the rich and the famous 
God chose them to be the first to meet him face to face with skin on. Oh, how, how fitting to, to know what we know about Jesus and, and the way Jesus led his life. Even at his birth, we, we see that the kingdom of God isn't just for the elite. It's not just for the, the popular and those who can pray beautiful prayers in the, in the temple. Oh, it's, it's not just for the insiders, but it's for the outsiders. Outsiders like, like shepherds, like the poor, like the common, like Mary and Joseph. Oh, it reminds us that the kingdom of God is is often made up not just of the noble and, and, and the wise, but of the poor. Oh yeah, the underclass. The people who live on the fringe of society. People who know what it is to, to work hard and often for little reward. God chose to exalt the lowly, as Mary noted in her song, her song of praise. And so... So it is that the most important event in human history is announced first to people who occupy a modest position in society. Uh, when, the, when the angel reminded Joseph that, that Isaiah had promised that, you know, look, the, the virgin will conceive a child and she'll give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Oh, my, my heart tells me Emmanuel, God with us, means truly with all. <laughs> what he's talking about here, with us, he's talking about all people. No matter their wealth, no matter their poverty, their status in society, their race, their color, their, their lifestyle they choose to live. God is with all. All. The, the shepherds, the shepherds were, were living in, in darkness, literally while they were keeping watch over their flock by night. They were truly in the dark. One would also presume they were metaphorically living in darkness, living with little hope, little encouragement, wondering what tomorrow would, would bring. Again, these were, these were the people who were on the lower side of the social ladder and those who really didn't have much, wondering what tomorrow would bring. And the angel appeared to Zechariah. The angel appeared to, to Mary. Now the shepherds, when, when they were just living life, minding their own business, tending to, to their sheep, serving in the temple. And, and the angels appeared with messages that would change their lives forever. The, the glory of the Lord shines uh, around them, meaning, the, meaning that the angel's presence is accompanied by this, this great light. This moment in their lives reflects that familiar prophetic advent reading in Isaiah that the people who, who walked in darkness have seen this great light. Those who lived in, in a land of deep darkness, oh, on them a light has shined. And they're terrified. They're terrified. In the midst of their fear, the angel says to them, as, as all those angels had before, do not be afraid. Oh, they're, they're not to fear because the angel is bringing good news of great joy for all the people. Catch that for all the people. You see, the good news is even for them. That's what they hear. It's even for me. And just like it is even for them, it is for you. It is for me. For people uh, we love, it is for the people that we even don't particularly care much for. <laughs> it's for Jews. It's for Gentiles. It's for men. It's for women. It's for those who are free, and it is for those who are enslaved. 
It's for all people. Well, you see, not only was this message for those who first heard it, the, the shepherds and all of those that they shared the good news with, it continues to be relevant and pertinent for us today. In church, I know we live in uncertain times. We do. Times that are even to be a bit frightening. Times where it's almost become common to hear about mass shootings. We know of unrest in our world, war in our world. News stories, news stories about how to survive a nuclear detonation. Something that we've not even been to think about in years past. Times when, when we're afraid and, and wondering how, how we're going to make it and what kind of life is our children going to have, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. No matter the level of our fear and uncertainty about the future, that angelic message is still the very same for us today. Do not be afraid. There is hope. Always. There is hope. God is with us. Emmanuel has come. His name, Emmanuel, that's what it means. God is with us. God is doing something new. Even though that we may not be able to see or we may not be able to understand at first, God is bringing good news, and it's not just for some people, it's for all people. Oh, listen, as we, we draw near to Christmas, my prayer, my prayer for you, <laughs> is that we will keep watch. I, I believe there are angels around us who are, are sharing messages of hope, messages of, of joy, messages of, of, of peace and love. In, in our world today. Angels who prepare meals for those who are in need. Angels who deliver meals. Angels ringing bells. And you see that outside stores too, don't you? Angels who, who are busy sharing the message of God's love with our world today. So you can, you can be an angel flying in the face of fear. For we are the body of Christ. Do not be afraid. And let us not miss the, the true story of, of love this season. I mean, this is, the, this is the love story that has been written for all of us. The, the, the story of true, faithful, unending, sacrificial love. God's love. And sending Jesus is the one love that changes everything. Love Love has been God's story from the beginning. <laughs> from the moment of creation, God's love was, was part of, of our fabric of, of, of the world. God's love was with Adam and Eve in the garden, even, even before and after sin entered the world. God showed his love by, by saving Noah and his family from the flood and, and giving them a, a, a new start, humanity, a new start. In the Old Testament, God gave the commandments as, uh, and law in love as a way for his people to atone for their sin and, and to stay connected with him. That's why he does that, because of his love. And his love turned the world inside out when he sent his son to live among us, the God of the universe, to be born in a stable. To die on a cross, to rise again from the grave. <laughs> it took love to disrupt and overturn the power of death and evil. But this love story, it's not about a feeling. It's a story about God's love in action. How the God of the universe loves you, loves me, loves all so much that he left everything 
in order to be with you, to sacrifice his life that you could be with him. That's love. Let's pray. Loving God who makes us ready for whatever unknown may come our way and who calls us to be messengers of of love in an ever-changing world, hear our prayers. Help us to accept and experience and, and share your love with others this season. Please continue to fill us with expectation as we live in, in your love and wait for the complete fulfillment of that love when Christ comes again. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Well, at this time, let us uh, prepare our hearts for a time of prayer. I'd like for us to sing just the refrain of Angels Among Us. in this moment, let us pray for all those who are in need of love. Let us share the names of those who might need a special touch, of maybe uh, those who need encouragement or healing or who just uh, are in need of renewal. Yes. Let us remember Becky in our prayers who's having surgery. Tim, let us remember Tim in our prayers. Eileen. Let us remember Dale. Uh, Dale is in the hospital. Uh, street matter. Others? Louise? Let us remember Louise, and she has a broken backbone. Okay. I understand Joanne Brooks uh, fell this past week, and so let us remember Joanne in our prayers. Also, um, Kenny uh, Hens, brother passed this week, and let's remember the Hens family. Yes, Luke. Morning. Maureen. Maureen. Do you know that was my grandmother's name? Uh, name was Maureen. Yeah, she was a lovely lady. Is Maureen one of your family members? She's your teacher. Okay. Well, let's remember Maureen in our prayers. Thank you, Luke. The Porter family. Those traveling. Jim and Barb Grove. We hear the message of God. In this moment, uh, let us pray for all those who um, maybe have experienced God 
uh, God's presence among us. Let us share some of those ways how maybe you have experienced God's presence among us or through others or through words. How have you experienced God this week? Alice, could you say a little more about that? Do you know roughly how many families that we have coming? With 81 meals. 81 meals. Um, and that includes the employees of the sheriff's office and our city police and I think the ambulance. And I think between yesterday and tomorrow, we'll have about 18 from our church. And 18 serving tomorrow. Wonderful. Wonderful. Very good. So glad we're doing that. So glad. Other ways that we've seen God's hands at work. Yeah, the food pantry. All those wonderful volunteers. For all who proclaim uh, your reign on earth, uh, we join their, their refrain. Let us pray together. Loving God, we thank you and we give you all of our praise for all the good gifts that you bring to our hearts, our lives, the way in which you walk with us, and the way that you are truly Emmanuel, that you are God with us. That brings us joy, Lord. That brings us your hope. <laughs> brings us peace, Lord, even in those moments of unrest as we experience your love. Lord, we thank you for each one of these lives of these dear people whom we we name before you today, Joanne and Dale and Becky and Tim and Eileen and Luis, Maureen and, and the Porters and Jim and Barb and all those traveling. God, we thank you for each and every one of them and we ask that you would be present to them and all that they're facing and for those who are ill, we would pray for healing. For those, Lord, who are suffering or struggling in any way, we just pray for your care. Give them to you, Lord, and ask for your peace in every way to come upon them, and may they be strengthened, and, and uh, may you encourage them in a mighty way. Lord, we pray for the Hans family as they walk through that valley of the shadow. Lord, just wrap your arms around them and bring to them your peace, your comfort, your care. We give them to you, O Lord, and just ask that you would encourage them in, in every way as you, as you help them, as you help them along. Now, Lord, hear us as we pray that prayer in which you've taught all your disciples. We pray in one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now it's time for us to joyfully give back a portion of what we've been blessed with.
Now please join me in our offertory prayer. Loving God, we believe there are angels among us, called within us, not just from up above. You give us love enough in these times of trial. You show us how to live. You teach us how to give. You call us to be the light and love. Amen. And if you're able, please remain standing for our next hymn. Angels among us. invite you to be hashtaggers of love and uh, to share our quote uh, meme from the front uh, cover of your bulletin. You might want to place that on whatever social media site that you use or snail mail it to someone or, or you, might even, um, you might even snap a picture of it and, and text it to a friend. But share with your friends and your family that Christ brings love in our world. Let us uh, turn toward the candle of love and sing to one another that message that we must take to our world.
go now in God's love and may you experience his peace, hope, and joy in every way. This evening our services begin at 5 o'clock for, for a candlelight and communion. I hope that you will be able to join us. Uh, also this morning our last uh, Christmas uh, ornament that I'd like to share with you is a little gift of love that has uh, uh, some angels feathers attached inside. Uh, pick up one of these on your way out. This is for every family of our church. Also there are some little, uh, there are the other weeks, there are the little wooden angels and the feathers and the angel wings. If you did happen to get those uh, already or maybe you missed a Sunday, pick one of those up too. God bless you all. Hope to see you tonight.